G'day, Euro Levens. Today, having a look at one of the important cases of the unit and um, and what's happened after that case, the legal change that came from the case. It's looking at the Mabo case, and some of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this as a case around terra nullius, that idea that Australia, that Indigenous Australians were seen to have no claim to the land, that as British settlement happened, that Australia was a vacant land or an empty land. And the Mabo case challenged that, and they found that there was a relationship with the land that should be acknowledged, which led to the idea of native title in Australia. So let's have a look at some of the story here. <clears throat> so when there was British settlement, and the pages that I've put in here are the pages of the textbook in case you want to look at the, uh, the references. When there was British settlement in Australia, the, um, the land was declared as terra nullius. So this idea is there was land belonging to no one or vacant and empty land. And that had some fairly important legal significance. The first is that it, it, it meant that at that time there was no recognition of Indigenous Australians' rights to any land, that the land was seen as vacant, even though there were many Indigenous Australians living there at the time. It also meant that the laws of the British government were imposed on this colony, so there was no room for traditional customary law. <clears throat> and there was an idea in the British system of government that, took, that, that recognised Crown land, and it meant if the land wasn't owned by someone else, it became government land. So effectively, this idea of terra nullius, the vacant land, empty land, that basically all the land then became owned by the government. So this brings us many, many years forward, into the 80s and 90s, into Eddie Marbo and his court case. Eddie Marbo is an Indigenous man who uh, was from the Murray Islands in the Torres Strait and found himself working at the university in Townsville, James Cook University. And he claimed, as he, as he talked to academics about his situation, that his family had had a significant ongoing relationship with the land on, his, on, the, uh, on the island that he came from. And he wanted to test this in a legal case. Uh, his case did go through the Supreme Court of Queensland and then went to the High Court. Um, and when they came to rule, six of the seven High Court justices found that Murray Islanders did have native title to those islands. So this challenged very much the idea of terra nullius uh, that, and it found that Australia was not unoccupied on settlement. Here are a couple of statements from the judgment. Um, the first one, the common law of this country would perpetrate an injustice if we were to continue to embrace the enlarged notion of terra nullius and to, be, and to persist in characterising the indigenous inhabitants of Australian colonies as people too low in the scale of social organisation to be acknowledged as possessing rights and interests in land. So directly challenging the idea that uh, there is no terra nullius. And two of the other justices in their uh, judgments made a very simple statement, the lands of this continent were not terra nullius or practically unoccupied in 1788. So that's the judgment, a very significant judgment, some you know, 200 years after the doctrine of terra nullius was imposed. Uh, and the question might be, you know, what does that lead us to? It leads us to the idea of native title. And it's a form of land title that recognises the, uh, the ties, the unique ties that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people have to their land. <clears throat> so how did, this, how did this decision lead to actual legal change of problems? Obviously this slide isn't quite right, but we'll keep going anyway. The first, the first of those changes is around the Native Title Act. So the Native Title Act was passed in 1993, which you can see is after the Eddie Marbo decision, and it formally recognised, protected and regulated native title. So if you think about that only some years before terra nullius was the underlying doctrine that was challenged and overturned, this is a big, this is a big move to now have a native title act. It led to other cases, so a really good, probably the highest profile of those cases is also in Queensland, um, and it looked at the WIC people and their case. Now, <clears throat> with native title, it had always been accepted that freehold land. So freehold land might be you know, how most people own in, in the cities. They own a little house 
And that house is, is freehold. They own it outright. Uh, it's their property. And native title is extinguished by freehold land. This looks at the questions around leases. So leases is where someone is given the right to the property for a, a period of time. This particularly looked at pastoral leases. So someone who was going to use, but had a lease to a property and they were going to perhaps graze cattle. And the question was, could native title be found even if there was a lease that had been granted to someone else? And in this case, uh, there was a finding, a four to three ruling that pastoral leases could coexist with native title rights. So you can see in this decision, following on from the Marba decision, another way that they were looking at this idea of native land um, title and where it might be able to be found. And this was a decision that, that found it there. The third thing that I've talked about here is the Native Title Tribunal. So this is an ongoing established tribunal. It came out of the Natal Title Act and it's based around providing processes and mechanisms where Indigenous Australians could, um, could look to access Native Title. So that gives us three different areas of legal change that came out of that Eddie, Eddie Marbo case. A few things, a few little links that you might want to have a look at. The first is just a little summary from Sydney University. They put together nice five little facts. As you probably know, Terra Nullius talks a little bit about Eddie Marbo there. Uh, the Old Scholars University, that's not really important to us. And it talks about the creation of the Native Title Act and the recognition of land ownership. It gives you some interesting statistics there. 629, it's a few years old now, 629 registered Indigenous land uh, use agreements, just as a another little example of what has come from there. There's an article there as well if you want to uh, have a look at it. Looks from the Sydney Morning Herald that looks at some of the um, the uh, legacy and what's come after the um, the Eddie Marbo case. So talking about the case in 1992 um, and the different elements that came, came on from there. And finally, there's a, a, a Parliament House website, Australian Parliament House, um, that looks at some of the, uh, the impacts 10 years on.